Hi, my name is Emma Ronath Pemberton and welcome to the latest edition of Wellington's Dr. PMO. As you know, we ask our network of PMO practitioners and leaders what challenges they're currently facing to see if we can give them some help and advice, a few tips and tricks to resolve the situation. What we're finding and what I'm being asked about at the moment is how to work in this virtual environment. From a PMO perspective, it's proving difficult to get visibility and really understand when our projects are in trouble. The projects that are still continuing are happening from home and so people are struggling to get to grips with how we do governance and assurance remotely. We're so used to being in the room with the project managers and the project board and the sponsors that it's actually quite hard to think outside the box. So I'm going to give you a couple of tips, one for now and one for the future that you might be able to work on whilst you're at home and before you go back to the office. So the first one is to use modern technology. Just because you can't sit in the room with somebody doesn't mean you can't do your normal assurance and governance processes. One of the things that I would say is that people are starting and being forced to use lots of things like Microsoft Teams. So get to grips with it, have a play and understand the functionality. You can also make sure that you try and use your camera as much as possible. I know that we all hate being on camera, but at this particular time, it, it does feel like we're spending a lot of time talking, but not much time connecting. We still need to remember that we are human first, PMO second. So if you can put your camera, look somebody in the eyes and make sure that not only are they okay from a project perspective, but they're also okay from a I'm communicating with another human being perspective. The second tip, and one that is a little bit more fundamental, is to maybe we can use this as a trigger to change the way that we work. At the moment, a lot of organizations have a project method. It's so many stages, so many documents, and we use it for all of our projects. Maybe we can use this as a trigger, this whole situation, to be a bit more pragmatic about the way that we approach governance and assurance. So a, few, a number of years ago, in 2013 in fact, me and my team developed a project definition tool. That tool allowed people to answer a number of questions and the results would say to them whether they needed any governance at all. It went right through from, this is the day job, go and do it, you don't need to tell us about it, right through to our projects, our complex projects and even our programs. This tool really, really helped because it allowed people to feel like they were, had a bit more autonomy. So if it came out quite small, we knew we didn't have to go through every single stage and fill in every single document. And the bigger stuff, actually, we were OK with doing that extra bit of work because there was an understanding that I get that now. I get why this is really important, because we've asked some questions up front, which are fundamental in categorizing our projects. I'm going to be releasing a number of articles on this over the next couple of weeks so that you can actually start to think about some of the things that you can do to approach project management in this way. So the first one, use the technology and make sure that you are connecting with people when you're doing your governance and assurance remotely. And the second is to maybe use this as a way to mature your PMO and learn to be a little bit more pragmatic about the level of governance that we have to apply to everything. Thanks for watching. Keep an eye out on wellington.co.uk or wellington.es. Thank you.